to Uncle John's Gun Masterclass. Here we have the Beretta M9 semi-automatic pistol in its disassembled state. This video is about the cleaning and lubrication of the gun, and I thought this time we'd do things in a slightly different order by starting with the gun disassembled so that we can see how very easy it is to reassemble this weapon. This weapon has one of the most convenient and most straightforward takedown um, mechanisms, if you will, uh, of any pistol. Let's, let's, but let's look at some safety features, or re really this is a reliability feature. Here's the, the barrel for the gun. Let's look now at the feed ramp. That feed ramp is very, very short. Here's a, a round which I'm offering up to it. One of the reasons why this gun is so, reli uh, so reliable is that the deflection, if you will, of the barrel, this is a short recoil design. I'll explain what that means. When the gun fires, the barrel and the slide, that's this thing here, come backwards. But the barrel only a short way, and the slide goes further back. This mechanism here, this pin and block mechanism here, do you see the guide rails there? They cause the barrel to be offered up to the new round which is then rammed in to the chamber by the slide coming forward. It strips the round from the magazine. Here's a magazine so that I can show you that. It strips the round from the magazine and slams it into the chamber quite, quite violently. Because the feed ramp on this gun is so short, the reliability is enhanced because quite frankly there's less to go wrong. Guns with a very long feed ramp offer more opportunity for the round being introduced into the chamber or supposedly introduced being introduced into the chamber of sticking on the feed ramp and that causes a jam because something like that happens and or that and the gun then for that moment is useless until the jam is cleared. And so the Beretta M9, which is its military version of which this is an example, a commercial example of the military version or the Beretta 92FS is quite reliable because of this very short feed ramp. So let's move the round out now and put it to one side quite safely. This block here is the clever mechanism that causes the barrel to move into position to receive the cartridge and then back up again. This little pin here does all the work. So it follows that these moving surfaces here have to be quite well lubricated because they're working extremely hard. When the gun is firing, these things are moving violent, violently around. They have to have quite loose tolerances, machining tolerances to ensure reliability, i.e. under sandy or dusty conditions. But that means that the lubrication of these parts has to be up to it to prevent their overly rapid wear. Incidentally, this little moving piece here, if you move it to one side and it jams, the best way to move it back again is always from this side rather than this side. If you push it this side, it tends to reinforce the jam. Moving it here tends to relieve the jam much more easily. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reassemble the weapon and then we're going to disassemble the weapon. The reason I'm doing this is to show how quickly it can be done. Here's the barrel and the slide. We put the slide 
rather the barrel, into the slide thus. We take up the recoil spring and we push it and seat Oops. the recoil spring on that little moving block thus. And this is where it gets really fun. You would not believe how well Mr. Bretta has designed this weapon. It is incredible. Here's the receiver. These are the lands, let's call them lands, which engage in the rails in the slide. We just push that back thus, and we move the takedown lever up. This is the takedown le lever here. And then we decock the weapon thus. That is it. It is so quick to disassemble. When we disassemble it, we push this button here. Now, my choice, let me back up a little bit. My choice when disassembling this weapon is also, is always to do it with the safety in the off position. Uh, it just makes for a more elegant takedown and reassembly. Watch what happens. I push that button at the rear. This little thing comes forward, which enables it to move. You see my finger there? Oops. I move that forward, or down rather, and the slide pops forward. And I remove the slide from the receiver thus. It's that easy. Let's do that again. We offer the slide up to the receiver and we push it back and we push the tape down lever up. The hammer is now on in the half cock position. We know that the gun is empty because we've just reassembled it empty. We move that the hammer back and we decock it like that. Let's do that again. We move the safety to the off position. We push from the back on the takedown pin and we turn that quadrant through 90 degrees. Then slide the slide off the receiver. We hold the slide thus, we take up the pressure and pull the spring away. We then put the slide down and we very cleverly lift out the barrel. It's one of the simplest weapons to disassemble because Mr. Beretta thought about the takedown control here or lever very very well as we've seen on other videos on some weapons it's far more complicated and fiddly so on one weapon uh, the CZ 75 one ends up having to bash the uh, takedown pin out with the bottom of the magazine. CZ-75 is a great weapon and in many ways it's very similar to the Beretta but the takedown mechanism on the Beretta I think is tremendous. So here's the barrel, let's look through it and see if there are any obstructions. Let me put a patch there and let's look. Should be quite clean because this weapon has already been cleaned after firing. So what we're going to do now is a very perfunctory clean and it's by it's done this way. We put a patch into the eye of a pistol cleaning tool, pistol cleaning rod, 
and we place some oil on the patch. What we're going to do is just coat the inside of the barrel with oil. We're going to clean the chamber here of any crud. You see, even though it's been cleaned, there's a little bit of crud in there. Now, did I clean it oh, since last firing? Mm, can't quite remember. Oops. Now, this is one of the things that can happen, and this is testament to the fact that this gun has a five inch barrel. I'm having to remove the rod from it, the handle because it's not quite long enough. And there it is coming out the other end. I pull it, and we've now coated the inside of the barrel with oil. Let's look at the barrel for a moment with a five inch barrel. Let's insert around there just for illustrative purposes with the cartridge there, which forms the beginning, effectively the beginning of the barrel. Let's look at the length of the barrel on this. It's about four and a half inches oops, to the seat of the bullet. Let me put the bullet there on the outside. About four and a half inches. So the seat of the bullet is by my fingernail there. And so that's quite a long barrel for a handgun. And do you remember on the kel we were looking at a barrel of about two inches. And people who are unfamiliar with weapons may be very, very surprised at how short the barrels are on handguns. So four and a half, five inches is quite a considerable barrel length on the 1911 government, so-called government model. Uh, that has a five inch barrel, which is, again, a help to accuracy because the sight radius on such a weapon is usually commensurately longer as well. So a four and a half inch barrel, and that gives a high degree of accuracy, particularly in a gun with a good sight radius, and particularly in a gun with a low bore axis. What's the bore axis? That's the height of the barrel above the... Well, the bore axis is more correctly where the impact of the recoil is felt as a moment about the shooter's hand. And so the lower that that is, the more accurate the next shot because the muzzle flip is less. A well thought through gun design will include a, bore ax a low bore axis as one of the uh, design principles. So let's look at this now. We just need to place a drop of oil there and a drop of oil here and on the pin here. Those bearing surfaces are critical to the operation of the gun and as discussed a moment ago, the action of the slide in recoiling is violent and these metal surfaces have to be separated from each other and the only practical way of doing that is with a film of oil which may only be in the extreme just a couple of atoms thick under working pressure so the oil has to do a tremendous job so let's move the receiver out of the way for a moment and let's reinsert the barrel into the slide which we do thus it sits there quite nicely and now we reinsert the recoil spring this is what I did wrong last time I, I tried that's it we just have to get the barrel sat back correctly oops, set back correctly in the slide whoops that shows that things go wrong even in the best run shows Put that back. There we are. The guide rod base plate has to fit in that little machine cut seating there. 
on the barrel mechanism that we were just looking at. So that's why it's difficult. I'm amused sometimes that the instructions for a handgun often say that it's important to wear goggles because of the risk of injury from springs flying out and so on. Well, that's true. Uh, equal prominence is, always, is also given to the risk of bullets flying out if one tries to uh, work on a gun that is loaded. Uh, so I suppose that's reasonable. So that's the slide and barrel assembly. Now, it is tempting to want to oil the shroud around the barrel, but it's not necessary because the, ba ba the barrel is guided by other means, but it does no harm. So one drop, and by capillary action, it will find its way to the bearing surface. So there we have the barrel. Now on this gun, I'm going to do the reverse of what we did on the Caltech, and we're going to apply oil to the lands here on which the slide moves. So the top and bottom surface here and also looking at the receiver we've got to just make sure that these guide rails for that block that's linked to the barrel also receive adequate lubrication. You can see that there's quite a lot of lubrication on here already. Now when I say quite a lot what I actually mean is a film of oil because one of the biggest problems with handgun lubrication is too much oil and you can have too much oil in a handgun. It attracts dirt and it can affect the ammunition particularly if ammunition is stored with a heavily oiled gun. Um, so that is a problem. So what we do now is just add Let's put it over all there, and here, and here, and on the side surfaces as well. And we're going to wipe off the excess in a moment. Too much oil is a bad thing with a capital B and a capital T. There we are. Just a smidge, looking for a film of oil, not an oil well. And what we can do by holding the gun this way, so we can put a tiny little drop in there. And again, it's carried along by in the, in the channel here. But we really don't want too much. And again, on the other side, very much a situation of less is more. Now, even though the gun is palpably unloaded, I am avoiding contact with the trigger, and I'll explain why. It's very important that when the slide is removed, you do not allow the hammer to fall on the internal mechanism of the gun. So if the hammer is cocked when you disassemble it, there is a risk that the hammer will fall if you touch the trigger because effectively you've put it into single action mode. So single action mode is where firing the gun simply relies on the, the previously cocked hammer being allowed to fall. In double action mode the action of pulling the trigger back cocks the hammer and then releases it and it follows of course that far, far more effort is required to operate the hammer in double action mode than in single action mode. When the slide is removed, effect, if the hammer is back, effectively it's in single action mode and it's very easy to knock the trigger which allows the hammer to fall 
and then you get very nasty things happening to the frame here which is not designed to accept the impact of the hammer upon it and I'll just show you in there if I can get the light to fall let me turn on the other light which I forgot to do we don't want the hammer to fall and damage the casting of the receiver so we've got oil on the bottom of these rails and a little smidge on the top and again it's difficult to know just how much to put in but less is definitely more there we are and so now we are in a position to reassemble the weapon again finger off the trigger always get into the habit of handling a gun safely even if one knows that it is empty if you handle the gun safely every single time then there will be no accidents safe gun handling is no accident it's habit get into the habit of handling a gun safely even when you know it is empty so now we offer up this slide to the receiver very gently and now we push the slide back and we just push it there and take up the first pressure on the hammer which coincides with the place where the takedown quadrant can be moved uh, back into the up position and then if we pull the hammer back and decock it that is the gun reassembled it's very very straightforward indeed you can check the smooth operation of the weapon and now when I do this you see the decocker lever is in the decock position I move the slide forward and it de decocks it it sounds violent it's not but uh, it's designed to operate in that way. With the decocker down, as it were, in the safe position, let's again look at the hammer block here. There's a firing, rather firing pin block. This item here is a witness to the operation of the firing pin safety. There's also another safety which causes the firing pin to roll out of the way. So the the safety features in this weapon are manifold and that means it's an excellent concealed carry weapon. It's an excellent service weapon for a police officer. It's an excellent military sidearm because of its accuracy and its high magazine capacity. If we leave aside the controversy over the 9mm round and as we can see with the little tag that came with the weapon it's carried by the US Armed Forces so if it's good enough for Uncle Sam it's good enough for me. Now when I was cleaning the gun just now because it was already cleaned I forgot to draw the cleaning brush through but uh, if you will forgive me that uh, momentary lapse of concentration because the gun had already been cleaned uh, doing that was unnecessary so there we are the Beretta M9 9mm let's watch again how quickly it is to disassemble I like to disassemble it with the firing uh, with the safety off and then push this little thing here. Let's see if I can do it while pressing with my finger and then pulling the takedown quadrant with my hand, with my thumb of my left hand there. The slide very nicely comes forward, comes off ready for the disassembly of the recoil spring, the guide rod and the barrel and the cleaning thereof. It goes back so easily. 
just push it back a little bit there and move the quadrant up again. I'm calling that a quadrant because it revolves through 90 degrees. So it's very easy to conceive that name for it. And again, in the past this gum has been very slightly overoiled. One of the problems with an overoiled gum is that the when the slide is operated, the oil can gather here at the uh, end of the uh, the rail and the slide. You just get little blobs of oil. But let's again look at the sight picture through the weapon. It's the dot and post design, as specified by the U.S. military, and it's a convenient sight pattern. It's accurate, but uh, some find it difficult to get used to. And surprisingly, there's very little instruction online on how to use it. I find it most accurate when it's like that, when the dot is covering the target and you're just intersecting the rear dot with the dot on the front post like that and then you can gauge the elevation of the round quite well. So the Breta M9, super accurate, quite economical to run pistol because the 9mm round is somewhat ubiquitous and it's fun to shoot. It shoots well and it feeds reliably and it's a great weapon. Excellent for target practice. Plinking even. The 9mm round isn't so expensive that it could not be used for plinking. For the, those that don't know, plinking is just firing at rocks and things a uh, short distance away just for fun. And uh, the weapon is ideal for that to keep one's hand in. And uh, it's, a, it's a great weapon. So enjoy the Beretta M9 and remember that gun safety is no accident. Think safety, handle the gun well, never fire a weapon when under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Always use a weapon respon responsibly and if you're with people who do not follow basic safety advice then remove yourself from their company uh, because they're not your friends so thanks for watching all the best bye bye